Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be checking out this $350 HP pre-built PC powered by the new Ryzen 3 5300G. Unfortunately, the 5300G is still OEM only even though AMD released the 5600G and the 5700G to the public and I really do wish they would release this part. I know it's a lower end part. We have four cores, eight threads with Radeon 6 graphics. But in my opinion, it's still a really good chip and it would have been an awesome budget offering. It would have come in cheaper than the 56 or the 57, and I guess that's why AMD didn't release it. But recently, I picked this up from my local Office Depot, and in the past, I've done a very similar review on a PC just like this, but it was powered by the 5700G, and that came with 16 gigabytes of RAM for around $550. This one here has the quad-core 8-thread 5300G, 8 gigs of RAM, 256GB M.2 SSD, and the price on this was $349. I have not been able to find this exact PC configuration on HP's website, but my local Office Depot actually had three of these in stock, so I figured I'd go ahead and scoop one up. This unit here does use a proprietary power supply, but it's an 80 plus 260 watts, so if you did want to throw a GTX 1650 in here, it would work out just fine. They've added some extra cabling in here, so you can add a hard drive down the road, but it does come with a pre-installed 256 gigabyte NVMe SSD. And as for RAM, this is running in dual channel from the factory. We have 8 gigs running at 3200 megahertz. So going into this, I'm not expecting this to be a high-end gaming machine whatsoever. Unfortunately, we can't overclock this RAM, we can't add any faster RAM, and this APU would definitely benefit from it. But for $350 and the way PC part prices and GPUs are right now, I wanted to see if this would be worth it and maybe later on down the road you could throw a GPU in it. Taking a look at this cooler, it does look a bit small, but uh, given that this is a 7 nanometer APU that only runs at 65 watts, I think it'll be sufficient for this chip here. So before we jump right into testing, I did want to mention that I did add an extra hard drive. That was the only modification that I've done to this PC. I added a 500 gigabyte Western Digital Blue because I had it laying around and I definitely needed a little extra storage. So for this video, I just really wanted to see if it would be worth picking up a PC like this right now for $350. Can it game? Can we run our emulators on it? How well does it handle internet browsing, maybe some 4K video playback? So I'm going to go ahead and get this thing set up. I'm going to install some games, some emulators, and some benchmarking applications. Alright, so here it is. I've had it up and running for a while. It's running Windows 10 Home right out of the box, and I did install an extra 500 gigabyte Western Digital Blue drive. We do have enough room here for a 2.5 inch drive, be it an SSD or a mechanical, but I went with a 3.5 inch drive because I had an extra laying around. As you can see, we have that Ryzen 3 5300G, 4 cores, 8 threads, 8 gigabytes of DDR4 in dual channel running at 3200 megahertz, and the built-in Radeon 6 graphics. Now, I always like to check to just to make sure that uh, this is running at full speed, so we'll run a render test. Sensors, 1700 megahertz, so that's what our Radeon graphics are running at right now. Overall, this has been a very snappy little setup here uh, for web browsing, 4K video playback. All your basics, the 5300G by itself without a graphics card is going to be plenty. You can even do some video editing on here, photo editing, you shouldn't have any issues at all. We'll just head up here to 20,000 fish, just a little WebGL test. We're still at 60, we'll go to 30, and that's when it drops down. But I mean, this little setup here would be great as an everyday desktop for web browsing, video playback, email checking, school work, and like I mentioned, I mean, this will even do some video editing and things like that. But I really want to see how this pre-built $350 5300G PC handles gaming and emulation. Before we jump into that, the first thing I always like to do is run some benchmarks. And first on the list, Geekbench 5, single core, 1378, multi, 4916. Actually looking really good for a quad core CPU. When it comes to Cinebench R23, we got a total multi-core score of 6,490. And the final benchmark I ran was 3D Mark Night Raid with a total score of 12,150. We could definitely up this score with faster RAM, but uh, unfortunately with this pre-built, the fastest we can go here is 3200 megahertz. So with the benchmarks out of the way, let's go ahead and move over to some PC gaming and see how this little APU performs. First up, we have CSGO, 1080p with a medium-low mix. By the end of this run here, we had an average of 91 FPS. Really not that bad, given that we're at 1080p. You could get a lot more out of it at 900p, and I would probably suggest playing a lot of these games at 900p on this APU.
GTA 5 did much better than I thought it would. We got an average of 66 FPS out of this one, 1080p normal settings. I really wasn't expecting to be able to play this over 60 even at normal settings 1080p. I thought I'd have to drop it down, but as you can see, it's actually performing really well. Overwatch is a very well optimized game. With this here, we got an average of 72 FPS by the end of this match at 1080p with a mix of medium low settings. Not bad at all. I mean, this is definitely fully playable at 1080. I was really hoping we could go into Forza Horizon 4 over 60 at 1080p, and you can do that with very low settings, but I wanted to up it a bit, so I did a medium low mix, 900p, and we got an average of 67 FPS out of this one. Going into Skyrim Special Edition, I thought we'd have no trouble at 1080p with a low-medium mix, but uh, unfortunately it looks like this is just a bit too intensive for this little chip here, so we had to go to 900p low settings to get 60 out of this one. I wanted to throw a fighting game in here, so I went with Injustice 2, where at 900p with a low-medium mix. I do see it dip down to around 59 every once in a while, but this is something you'd never notice if you didn't have that FPS counter on. And finally, for the PC gaming side of things, we have Dirt 5, and this is just one of those titles that really gives these APUs a run for its money. I had to drop this down to 720p low, and we still can't hit 60. We actually only got an average of 49 FPS out of this one. Now it's time to move over to some emulation, and I didn't test anything low in here from PSP, Dreamcast, NES. It's going to run those at full speed. I wanted to go a little higher end, so first up we have PS2. I'm using the standalone version of PC SX2, DirectX 11 back in, at 1080p. It's running really great here. Next up, we have some Wii U using the SimU emulator, and I just wanted to show this one off running at 60. And for a majority of the titles that are a little easier to emulate with the SimU emulator, you'll be able to do a little bit of an upscale at 60, but when it comes to a game like Breath of the Wild, 720p, 30fps is about all we can do with the stock setup here in that 5300G. Still, Breath of the Wild at 30fps is still very playable, and as you can see, there are some Wii U games that will go to 60. And finally, we have some PS3 emulation using RPCS3, Vulcan back in, this is at 720p, basically the native resolution of the PS3, Skate 3 here, running at 60, but this isn't going to run every PS3 game at full speed. Even my high-end machine has trouble running God of War 3, but it's still really impressive seeing that this quad-core 5300G can do PS3. With these lower powered PCs, I always like to check out total system power consumption from the wall using a kilowatt meter, and this one's actually pretty low. At idle, 27 watts, average gaming 68, and the maximum that I could get this to pull while maxing out all four cores, eight threads, and the built-in Radeon 6 was 89 watts. When it comes to average CPU temps, idle, 39 degrees Celsius, average gaming, 64, and in a 10 minute Cinebench R23 run, we only hit 79 degrees Celsius. So even though this cooler does look a bit small, it's definitely sufficient for the Ryzen 3 5300G. So overall, I'm actually really impressed with this $350 pre-built. We do have enough room in here for like a GTX 1650. We don't have any extra power connectors on that PSU, but this will support a GTX 1650. And I know throwing one of those in here would definitely up the gaming performance on this machine. They're a bit uh, expensive right now, and that's really why I wanted to test it in its stock form. And I gotta say, I really do wish that AMD would have released the 5300G alongside the 5600G and the 5700G to the public. Unfortunately, these are still OEM-only chips. 
Like I mentioned, I wasn't able to find this exact PC on HP's website, but my local Office Depot had three of these in stock, and I figured I'd go ahead and scoop one up, so your best bet is to check your local Office Depot. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you're interested in seeing this machine with a GTX 1650 installed, let me know in the comments below. I think I got one that doesn't require power. I could slap in this. And uh, like I mentioned, I know we could get really good gaming performance, at least 1080p performance out of this pre-build. If you have any questions, you know where to leave them. And like always, thanks for watching.